Hello, this is Franz with Clay Manufacturing. This video is for how to complete the CAM operation, so the computer-aided manufacturing, the tool pass for the top operations of this little coaster right here, and this is the chunk. So in my prior video, we completed the CAD um, portion of this, so, so the modeling of it, 3D modeling using Fusion 360. Now we are going to create the tool pass so you can cut it out like this. That's kind of what it looks like. Um, right here is a completed version of it. So this is just an overview of what we're doing. So this would be our op one. We're going to do a face mill. We're going to do an adaptive contour, clean it up, pocket, leave some material, come back, hit it with an engraver. Then we are going to clean it, go to final depth in all the pockets, trace it just for a little um, eye appeal. And then we'll finish it off with a chamfer. And so this will be operation one. And we still have the hat on here. So let's get started. This is our drawing that we're working from. And this is where we, oh shoot, right here. This is where we left you off. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to save a different version for my purposes. So I'm going to go file. I'm going to say save as um, video demo. And I'm going to say cam fall 2020 cam. And I'll say op one. So in case I need to go back and make video changes, I kind of have a record of what I'm doing. All right, so now I've got my new file over here and we're gonna get started. So the first thing you notice is when we made the model, we made a component, which is this square right here. And right now when I open a file, it has a whole assembly structure active with that dot. And it even says when I hover active component, I wanna make this active. So I'm gonna go and click on that. So there we go. So I just made my component active and I want to go from design into manufacture. So I'm gonna click here and go to manufacture. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to tell it what size raw stock I'm working with. So this is, I'm stealing this from my other, my tuna project, but what size aluminum stock am I working with? If you see this, and this are drastically different sizes. So I'm gonna start out with different size extruded aluminum that fits the part closer so I'm not wasting material. Like I'm not gonna use a big old chunk of stock like this to machine this because I'm wasting my machine time and material and just the cost, yeah, and just the cost of the material. So this project is meant to be used using um, four inch by half inch bar stock. So it'd be four inches wide and half inch thick. And then you can cut it to your four inch length. With that said, I'm going to go over to setup. So I'm going to say new setup. And if you look on my view cube over here, I have my Z going up, X going to the right, Y going away. And that was done in my preferences. And if that's not done in your preferences, you can still come over here um, with the work coordinate system and you can kind of push this thing and move it how you want it to be in yours. So it's automatically defaulting to my um, work coordinate system. My, my Z up, which is what I want. And I'm going to do a box stock point. So that's talking about your stock. So the stock box point, and it's this yellow box. That's your stock. So I'm going to go over here to this corner. And let's say my X and Y were flipped. I can um, flip it with these arrowheads. And you notice it starts jumping around. So sometimes it's playing that game where you're moving your work corner system to get it how you want. But then you have to come back over here and say, well, no, I want that corner. And so, um, and you can also come here and say, I want to define a Z-axis. So I can click on there and define a Z-axis. I can define, if I want to define an X-axis, like it wasn't doing what I want, then I can say, that's my X-axis. And so I'm starting to define what is what. But I'm going to clear these out because mine was really good. I, I'm just going to come over here, my stock box point, and I'm going to select there. So my Z is up, X is to the right, Y is away. Very important. If those are flip-flop, the way you touch it off, if you're using an edge finder to go X, Y, and then Z on the top for your tools, it's going to put it in a different part of the milling table. So always important what way your work coordinate system is going, and that determines where you're going to locate the workpiece on the milling machine. Now that I've wasted a lot of time talking about that, let's hop over to stock. So for mode, I want to say I'm a fixed size box because that's I'm, it's a defined size. We're starting with stock. And we're going to cut it in the X at about four inches in length. In Y, it's going to be extruded. The extruded side's four inches. 
in the model position center height it actually is half of an inch 0.5 and we want to move it to the top so i'm going to go offset from z positive and it tries to keep it centered and i'm going to say 10 000, 0.01 I'm going to say OK. And while we're here, I'm going to see what I did on the one I machined out, if I did 10 or 20 thou, just to be consistent with everything. I did 10 thou. Perfect. Whoopsies. Maybe one day I can navigate this. All right. So we have our stock set up. And all I did at the end of that, I just said OK. And this right here, that's just the dimensions of the actual model, which is kind of nice to see. And this this will work fine if you're using a standard Kurt style vise with the standard hard jaws and one and five eighths tall parallels. You can machine the top, have a, a barely enough room where you're not hitting the end mill into the hard jaws, and then you can flip it over and machine the backside. If you did my um, if you did my tuna, you do have to use two different height parallels. You got to use shorter ones to do the backside. So this one, everything's pretty darn easy on it. Now the next thing we need to do is. We need to figure out the first tool path to do. And I'm going to choose to do a facing tool path to skim it off. Because um, whenever anyone handles aluminum or you get it, it's just got that kind of um, ugly finish. And then there's dings on it where the saw person dropped it, the forklift operator dropped it, what have you. So I'm going to clean it up, make a nice machine perfect, uh, my, <laughs> nice machine surface. I'm going to go face. And I'm going to go to my tool library where I have my clay mini mill aluminum i'm going to use t1 which is my about a two and a half inch face mill. i'm going to say select all my feeds and speeds will be referenced for a mini mill with a standard spindle that can spin max at 6000 rpm so i'm going to spin this baby pretty fast we're going to go at 6000 rpm and i like to spin tools faster than like needed so in case you guys get your offsets wrong it's a little bit easier on the cutters it can actually take it better so we're going to go 6,000 RPM, 6,000 RPM, 30 inches a minute, lead in, lead out, 30 inches a minute. I love it. We're going to move on. Geometry. Um, did I actually have to select anything? I'm just, I'm looking at one of my cheats. I don't think I did. Heights, I don't need to do anything. My bottom height is my model top. Passes tab, this is getting really good. So this pass extension will take the tool just off the part to clean it up. And I don't, I'm not going to do multiple depths here on the back side. I will. We're going to leave these defaults and say, okay. And look at that. So one thing that I'm going to change is see the step over on here. I did it where I did a bigger step over. So let's kind of look at that. I'm going to go edit. Let's look what I did. So I did a step over 2.3 inches. I'm going to say cancel. Oh, goodness. Every time. We're going to right click and I'm going to say edit and let's do that. I'm going to go to passes tab right here. That would have worked, but it's going to make a lot of marks in there. So step over, let's say 2.3 inches. So right here I did 2.3 inches and I'm going to say, okay. And typically with a face mill, you want about 60 to 70% of engagement of the cutter diameter. So now we're probably going, we're definitely going more, but we're doing a very light pass. So that's going to be okay. So now we've done that, we want to do, I'm going to rough out the outside of this, like with these corners. So I'm going to go 2D adaptive clearing, and I'm going to go grab my tool. I'm going to use a T2, which is my 3 8 flat end mill. I'm going to say select. We're going to let this baby run at 6,000 RPM. I'm going to bump up the feed rate to, let's just say like 50 inches a minute. I'll go 50. 50 and 50. So we're spinning at 6,000 RPM. That's max for my machine. And the RPM, uh, the linear feed rate is 50 inches, 50 inches, 50 inches. Perfect. Now geometry, I'm going to select this top surface. And now you see that blue, that's where it's going to cut. And if it wasn't like that, you can click on that arrow and you flip it. So now it's going to cut everything on the inside. I don't want that. So I'm going to click. Boom. Heights. Now we're going to do, I want to go, I selected the top, right? So I want to go the bottom height. I want to go to my model bottom. So the bottom of this model, and I also want to bypass the bottom 
this is the bottom height right here. I want to go 10 thou past it. So when I flip the part over, say I don't hit my nominal dimension, I've, I've cleaned a little bit more. So in case I left it a little fat, it's still going to be cleaned up on the backside. So I'm going to say negative 0 0.01, that's 10 thou. So I'm going to drive that tool 10 thou past the bottom. And I think that's it on here. And then pass this tab, optimal load. I'm going to beef it up a little bit. I'm going to go, so a, a kind of a safe rule of thumb is 10% of the tool diameter. So it would be 0.1 times the cutter diameter. So in this case, it would be 0.0375. Now, Haas, if you go on Haas tooling, they have a cool, they have a HSM high-speed machining. They do, I think it's 0.05 times the diameter. So you can go extremely fast linear feed rate and really small step over. So that's kind of what I had it set up as. And then we want to do stock to leave. We're going to do on the side of the tool radial, we want to do 10,000. So think radius, radial, side of tool, axial, under the tool. I don't want any stock to leave. I want to go to the floor bottom. But I do want to leave material on the walls because this is a roughing strategy. And I'm going to come back and clean it up with a contour tool path. So I typically always do smoothing and feed optimization. Feed opt is a bigger deal on inner corners. Now here on linking tab, if I'm looking at this, this is my back left corner. Um, I want to have this thing enter where I can see it. Oops, get off of here. So for entry position, I'm going to go like right here in this front corner. So I have a better visual view in my from when I'm running this in the machine of what's going on. If it enters back here, it's much harder to see. And let's see what I'm going to do for think that's it. I'm going to do get off of here. I don't want to do a vertical lead and radius. I'm going to zero that out. I'll do a, let's say 0.1. I'm going to do a kind of big horizontal lead in. So when the tool enters and exits and let's say, okay, let's see what it looks like. Oh no, I should have actually, I was thinking for some reason I was on the contour. Let's go back. I'm going to go edit. I'm sorry for changing this, but this is the nature of programming. Back and forth. Horizontal lead in, it was like 0 0.037, 0 0.037, and I'm going to go on here. We'll just leave it at 0 0.037, 0 0.037. I, I thought for some reason I was getting ahead of myself. All right, I'm going to say okay. So all I did was just kind of change that back to what it was, and these are the lead ins, so that's, it's not, a, these are the lead ins right here, lead ins and lead outs. And you can see it's got a radius and a radius. So that's going to be okay. And we're going to go save. Just remember, if you don't have an internet connection, um, you will not save your work, which can be kind of frustrating on Fusion. Okay, so next one, let us do, we're going to do a pocket. So we're going to do this front pocket right here. And before we do that, we're going to sidetrack. Is on mine, you see how I have a logo right here? So we're going to show you what you would do with a logo real quick and how to do it. I believe I have this saved as an SVG, so it makes it a lot easier. So real quick, if last minute I decide I want to put some text on there or add a logo, I'm going to, and it's already made, I'm going to go design. And I want to, I have my chunk active. I want to insert a logo. So I'm going to go insert SVG. And it's super easy if it's already an SVG. I'm going to go from my computer. <clears throat> this is my clay logo. I'm going to say OK. And then what plane do I want it on? So looking at my view cube, I want it the way I did it is I did it on this bottom. Can't really see it. I did it on this bottom pocket. So we're going to select that plane. And you see it's scaled way up. So right now, just so everything looks closer I'm going to scale it down and then I need to rotate it so I'm going to rotate this thing 180 degrees and it's still really big but I'm going to start getting it closer see what my size looks like I need to scale it even more move it a little bit more scale it down move it Ooh, now I can go bigger so let's up the scale a little bit because if it's too tight, it's just going to look like a bunch of smudges with my tool. Hmm. I think we're going to... Hmm. 
This pocket is a real shallow pocket, so I'm not really afraid of my tool running into that sidewall, but I don't want it to touch. And right now, I don't really care what my scale factor is. I'm just kind of placing my logo in there. So I like that. I'm going to say, OK. And I'm going to say, Finish Sketch. And for funsies, we're going to look at my other one. Eh, that's pretty close. My Y is real close to the bottom. And oh, you know what I don't like is I don't want this pro. I don't want this border. So to delete things that you don't want, I'm just going to click on it, go delete. And on mine, I have these little radiuses, so I need to be careful just to delete them. And you don't have to. In the cam, you could just not select them, but I want to get rid of this, just so cause less confusion for myself and you. <clears throat> One more little radius. All right, I love it. So now I'm going to just hit save. OK, and so from here, I'm going to go back over to Manufacture, and I'm going to go back to that toolpath. So we were talking about a 2D pocket. So this is active, and while we're here, I'm just going to say Chonk Op 1, which refers to the top operations, and Enter. So let's do my 2D pocket. We're going to go 2D, and we're going to go Pocket. And I want to use my quarter inch flat end mill. So I'm going to go select. I'm going to go to my little chunk, my clay mini mill aluminum. And that's my T3. T3 is my quarter inch flat end mill. I'm going to say select. And we are going to spin this at 6,000 RPM. And we're going to rough it out a little bit faster. We're going to go 35 inches a minute. Lead in, lead out, 35 inches a minute. Perfect. Geometry, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to select this bottom um, pocket because I want to kind of rough that out a little bit. These pockets aren't really deep, so I'm kind of doing a little extra legwork here, but it's okay. It's going to turn out nice. Heights tab, nothing. Passes tab. We want to leave some stock to leave. Let me, and then let me look at my step over. So I did a few things here. Let's expand this. Um, get off. Finishing passes. What? I did. Step over is 0 0.0375. 0 0.0375. Finish feed rate 35. Actually, I don't think I need that. I want to come back to it maybe. Step over is 0375 for max step over, 0 0.0375. I'm probably going to come back here and delete this because I don't need a finishing pass. I think I left that on my computer on accident. I'm looking at some notes I took. Stock, radial stock on the side, I don't want any. But under the tool, I'm going to leave 10 thou because when I chamfer, when I use a chamfer for engraving, it leaves a nice burr. So I'm going to leave 10 thou. It's going to have a burr. I'm going to come back and clean this pocket up. I'm going to go smoothing, and I'm going to say uh, feed optimization. And you know what? I'm just going to remove this because I know I don't need it. I'm going to get rid of finishing pass. And this is going to remain the same, 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 same. And the same, same, same. I'm not changing anything here. We'll say OK. And that's all I'm looking for is just to rough this out, and it's going to leave stock under the tool. And let's kind of look at my other one quickly. Oh, I need to do my feed optimization, but I can't believe I left, or I did a finishing pass. Anyways, I'm not going to dwell on it. Let's come to this one, and let's update my feed optimization. Edit so it's slow. Ah, yeah, we're leaving it. It's good. We're good. We're going to say cancel. So we're looking good. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to do a trace for this tool path, for that uh, sketch I just created. I'm getting very fed up where how Fusion keeps leaving these pop-up windows on my screen. Get off. OK. A little tantrum's over. So 2D, let's do trace. And we're going to do a quarter inch chamfer. So in my library, that is T5, 250 chamfer. Yep. So let's grab it. We'll say select. 
spin as fast as my spindle goes, 6,000 RPM. We'll leave it at 20 inches a minute, 20 inches a minute, pretty good. And then let's get to selecting. So I'm going to try to just hold my left, my mouse. Let's see. This might be kind of annoying. Select, select. Or it might be easier than I thought. So I'm going to try to just click on everything. I'm going to have to zoom in a touch. I'm sure I'm going about this the slowest way possible. So if you know a faster way, do it. Don't know why those are different color. All right. I got all the geometry selected, I think. Heights, nothing. Passes tab. I'm going to do an axial offset of just one thou, say negative 0.001. So that's going to go one thou past that selection because I actually want to cut into my model. And so if I went, if I left nothing, it would just go to the very top of it and walk on top. And then when I clean up that extra material we left in the prior tool path, um, it will basically erase everything. So I'm going to go one thou. You don't need much when you're doing a um, engrave. And I'm going to do smoothing, and I'm going to do feed optimization. And let's look at link. I don't think I did anything on linking. I didn't. We're going to say OK. And there we have it. We have our chamfer. And you can kind of see in this simulation right now how it's cutting into the material, into the stock that's left. We're going to go save so we don't lose any info. And then we need to... What am I doing? I'm going to head of myself. I need to clean out. So now I'm going to come back. I'm going to cut all these pockets out, and I'm going to finish, go to the floor on this one, which should leave me a nice engraving on there. We will do, so let's go. We could even do this. Uh, we'll go the slow route. We'll just go 2D pocket. We know what tool I want. It's T3, so I'll go select. And now this is what I've been using. So that's my quarter inch flat. I'll say select. We're going to spin it at 6,000 RPM. We're going to go at 35 inches a minute. So oopsies, let me change that. 35 cutting, lead in, lead out, 35. Geometry, let's just go and select the bottom of each one of these. Okay. And make sure you're doing the bottom. And we'll do heights tab. Not going to touch anything. Passes tab. Uh, I don't want any stock to leave. So deselect, smoothing, yes. Feed optimization, yes. And on here, we're just going to leave these defaults. But let's do, I need to change my step over. Why am I not seeing this? Maximum step over. I want to do 10% of the tool diameter, 0.0375. So it's 0.1 times 0.375, my 3 8 And I'm not going to do a finishing pass. I don't know why I had that in my original. We'll leave that. We will leave that. And we will say OK. So there we go. This is where it's doing my feed optimization. You could go in there and reduce it more. Um, but what it's going to do is it's going to go really slow because here I'm not engaging on a whole lot of material. Once I get out here, it might be a little more important uh, so you don't get chatter or break your tool with the radial engagement. But in here, if I slow it down too much, it's going to make almost like a pause, like a dwell mark or a pause mark from the end mill just sitting there at a really slow feed. So we're going to run those. But, you know, if you get chatter or anything, you can play with that feed optimization. So the next thing I'm going to do is, let me get in here, is I traced this bottom, this bottom radius. I just I use a little eighth inch ball end mill, and it adds a nice little detail to the uh, bottom of that pocket. And plus, it's modeled in there. So we're going to chase that after we clear out these pockets. This stops here, so I really just need the nose of my ball end mill to come here. And it should clean that up. And we're going to even go a little bit past it. So let's see what I have up my sleeve. We're going to go 2D. Right. 
no, yeah, too deep. We're going to do a trace. We want to go to my 8th inch ball. I don't think I've used that yet. So let's go mini mill aluminum. I want to do my, that's my T7, my 8th inch ball. I'm going to say select. And I want to leave this at 6,000. I'm going to bump that up to 6,000. And I'm going to leave this at 15, 15, and 15. I'm not going to touch my um, plunge. So for geometry, I'm going to come in here and select that same bottom line because I want that to be the center line of my tool, of that little ball end mill. Heights tab, I'm not going to touch anything. Passes tab. We're going to do an axial offset of 2,000. So actually, I'm cutting into the body a little bit. I'm just doing that for looks. You don't have to. So if I was making this for a customer, I would have to call them up and get clarification. Be like, hey, do you mind if I do this? Um, but in reality, so this, this isn't something you do willy-nilly if you're making a part for someone else. But since this is our part and I want it to make it look a little more pretty, we're going to shoot that thing two thou past the bottom to kind of make a neat little transition. Um, it's not a big deal. Just we'll add a detail. And I think that's all I did. So I'm, I'm going to do my smoothing. I'm going to do my feed optimization. And we are leaving the sideways comp on center because we want to go right on that. 2,000 offset. I think we're good. Let's go on linking tab. I might have done a lead in entry. I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to do a 20,000. So it kind of rolls on a little smoother. And I'm going to do a lead out that rolls on or rolls off. So that way it's not, it doesn't just go to depth and then start cutting. You'll see a witness mark. I'll say okay. And if you wanted to, you can even. I like where it put it. So a lot of times when I enter in tools, I try to do it in radiuses where it blends it in a little bit better. Because if it's over here on a big flat, you can see you're more likely to see a witness mark. But it kind of defaulted to putting it right here. And you can see how that green goes away, that line. It's because it goes into the part. It actually will cut into the part. Which for this, that's what I want it to do. I'm going to go save. I'm going to say OK. What do we have left? So we really just need to do, we need to remove this extra material here on the sidewalls with a contour and then just a little chamfer and I think we should be done. So let's see. Somehow I skipped that, I think. No biggie. Yeah, so it's cool. I'm going to put it on here, and then I'll show you how I can move a toolpath as well. Because if we look at this one, I don't know how I skipped that, but I did. We did a face, adaptive, and then a contour to finish that out. No big deal. I'll show you how. So from here, we still have that material. So I'm going to go 2D, and I'm going to go 2D contour. That's a finishing strategy. And I'm going to grab my 3 8 flat. I usually like a pretty rigid tool. So for my setup, that's a pretty rigid tool. I'm going to say 3 8 flat end mill, select. We're going to go 6,000 RPM, 6,000, leave it at 30, 30, 30. Geometry tab, I'm going to select the top. Heights tab, for the bottom height, I want to go model bottom. And again, I want to go 10,000 past the bottom. I'm going to go negative 0.01. Passes tab, I'm going to go smoothing, fee optimization, linking tab, I want to do a horizontal lead-in radius of 0 0.05. I don't want a linear lead-in distance, I'm going to zero that out. I don't need a vertical, I'm going to zero that out. Entry position, not pre-drill, but entry. I'm going to go right here on that front corner so I can watch that tool drop. I'm going to say OK. And there we have it. So there is our finished contour. And to be consistent with my other tool path, if you put a tool path somewhere, like if you create a new tool path that drops at the bottom, but I can left mouse click and drag it to where I want it. Where'd it go? Right here. So there we go. Now that matches, for the life of me, I can't click this right. We'll go face, adaptive, contour. And now we are the same, face, adaptive, and contour. So no big deal. I'm going to hit save so I don't lose information. And then this is our rough pocket with stock to leave. We come in, we do a trace, we go down, we cut into our part, a thou. Then we come, these go all, oopsies, these go all to the finished bottom depth of those pockets. 
and then I trace just to get rid of that extra material and that radius and then a little extra. The last thing or we're going to do is a chamfer. I'm going to go 2D, 2D chamfer. Let's go look at my, I'm going to use my quarter inch chamfer and I'm also going to cheat off of my instructions I made for me. We're going to go 6,000, 6,000 and we're going to ramp this up to 30 inches a minute. So 30, 30 and 30. Let's go to my contour selection. I'm really just going to grab that outside. Heights, nothing, passes. I want to do a real small chamfer. I'm going to go 10 thou. And if you are using chamfers that have a chip tip on them, it will make a much deeper chamfer than 10 thou. So be careful of that. You might want to do less, maybe 5 thou. If it's a real beat up chamfer, maybe none, and then just lock it in. We're going to leave that. We'll leave that. I'll go smoothing, fee optimization. Let's go to our linking. Horizontal lead-in, I like to do a horizontal lead-in where it rolls on, so I'm going to go 0.05. I'm going to do no distance, 0.0. .0. I don't need a vertical because we're coming in from the side. I'll go 0, 0.0, and I'll say OK. Oh, what I forgot to do, I'm going to go Edit. I'm going to enter in Entry Position. I'm going to go right here, and I'm going to say OK. And so this is our little lead in and then it cuts, comes around and then that's our lead out. And you see how the green's going up. That's the exit. The red is the entry. Let's hit save so we don't forget. So we're going to say OK. And that is it. This is the part. That's my little clay manufacturing. This is so this is using all those feeds and speeds. And my next video will be how to cut these feet off too on the back side. Hope this video is helpful to someone. Have a good one. Bye.